Types of Credits Open Trade Credits I told my father that you're doing a good job with me. Thanks. It seems I may get a promotion soon. <laughs> I don't know about that. I only know that he's very happy about it. Okay, then let's continue to make him happy. Now that we know a lot about credit terms, shall we go ahead and talk about the different types of credit? I am all ears. Good. We have got various types of credit that are given to customers. Why are there a variety? Because it depends on the type of goods and the financial ability of the buyers. This brings us to the open trade credit, higher purchase, and installment buy. Wow, there is really a lot to learn. Let's start from the top. Open trade credit. Sure. Now, this is given to a buyer who is expected to pay for the goods within a specific period of time. And you say that this period is called credit period. Yes. The buyer assumes the ownership of the goods immediately. Under open trade credit, we still have some conditions, which gives us different types of open trade credit. Yes. The first of them is simple credit, which is given to a buyer over a short period of time. How short? Say uh, a day or a week, and is also known as prompt cash. This is mostly used when the seller is close to the buyer and knows them personally. I think it also works among small-scale traders. I've seen this being done back home between the kiosk or canteen owners and the people around them. Yeah, that's right. I'm glad you can relate. I am told that business studies is a living subject because what we study in class can be related to what we see around us. Yes, and that is what makes business studies a unique subject. The second one is the trade credit, which is given by one trader to another. Mm -hmm. The two of them agree on the period for payment, and this might be inclusive of the interest on credit. But that might be a little expensive on the buyer. Yes, but usually the seller gives a discount if the payment is done within an agreed period of time. I see. Now, the last one of them is the credit card. Uh, the normal credit card? Yes, that plastic card that you can use to acquire goods and services and pay for them later. So, the credit card holder must have a credit card account. Every time the card is used, the bill is sent to the credit card account holder and the amount is recovered at the end of the month. Wow, I like this. Can a normal ATM card be used as a credit card? Mm, just some of them, not all. Credit cards have a lot of advantages, by the way. First, I like the fact that it is small and so can be carried around very effortlessly. Correct. And it allows the customer to buy goods on credit. And when the customer pays in time, his credit card ratings go up. Cards can also be used internationally, right? Some of them. They are also safer to carry around as compared to cash. However, I think if I carried around a credit card, I might end up buying things that I hadn't planned for. Hmm, called impulse buying. The cards company also charges you an interest rate for the card's use. And not everybody can afford to use credit cards. That's right. They are usually used by people with high income. Not to mention that only a few businesses accept credit cards. And what if a credit card holder doesn't pay in time? Then he has to pay some penalties. Credit cards are also mostly used in urban areas and so are not useful to people in rural areas. Finally, the procedure for getting a credit card is long. I see. Now, the last type of open credit account is called budget account. Here, a credit facility or loan is given to a customer who then uses it up to a maximum amount that is not supposed to be exceeded. So the buyer takes goods on credit up to the agreed amount? That is right. It is normally operated by large-scale retailers. So any customer can access a budget account just like that? Mm, not really. After the credit worthiness of a customer has been assessed, the customer may also be required to deposit an amount of money before accessing the facility. So how is it on credit if the customer is depositing money? Well, the amount being received is much greater than the amount being deposited. The deposit is just a kind of an assurance to the seller that he will not run a complete loss if the buyer fails to pay. I see. And the buyer and seller agree on how regular payments are to be made. And this is inclusive of the charges to use the budget account services. Makes sense. 
Now next, we are going to look at the two remaining types of credit. Sounds good.